Hello everyone. I want to welcome you to our worship service for Palm Sunday. And uh, we will celebrate uh, Palm Sunday today and this morning. And uh, I invited Jennifer to come along and help lead in the singing uh, this morning. And uh, you, can, you can sing along with us. We're going to try to do uh, some of the words on the, the TV screen for one of the songs. And so uh, I'll go ahead and let Jennifer take it away there. says rejoice greatly O daughter of Zion shout aloud O daughter of Zion behold your king is coming to you righteous and having salvation is he humble and mounted on a donkey on a colt the foal of a donkey so we celebrate today Palm Sunday I have some announcements um, to give you the first one is that for those of you who may be wondering, uh, Desiree did have her baby uh, last this Thursday uh, to a boy named Ethan David. So congratulations to Desiree, and uh, be sure to be in prayer for her and her baby and for the family uh, right now at this time. Also, uh, another announcement I want to make is the call all. I've been doing the call them all uh, about three time, two or three times a week with devotions. If you haven't been receiving the call of all and would like to, let me know. Or if you know of somebody who has not been receiving them, um, um, uh, just let me know. I have just increased our capacity uh, with the call of all people that have more names to be, put, be able to be put on that. So uh, we'd like to put more people on there um, because we have the capacity. So uh, so let me know if you, if you need want to have that on it. Also. Um, 
this Wednesday, I'm going to try to have an online prayer meeting at 6 o'clock, uh, a Zoom meeting. Um, all you have to do, if you go to our website, uh, tbccanton.com, you click on the, the tab up top on the menu saying uh, prayer online prayer meeting, and that will take you to a page where you will sign in, and uh, I will be able to get your information, and I'll be able to send you information on how to, how to join that at 6 o'clock Wednesday. So I'd like to try that out and see if it works. It's not the best in the world. To, it's better to have us person to person, but uh, we're making do with the best we can. Also, if, uh, you, if you're uncomfortable with coming to the meeting or being on a camera, you can really chime in with just your voice. So, so you don't have to be, it doesn't have to be a video of you. It can just be your voice and we can be talking together. So I want to encourage you with that as we try to pray for each other. Also, if you don't think you'll be able to make it and if you have a prayer request, yeah, send that to me and we'll pray over that, okay? Uh, also, um, I'm going to be doing a studies, uh, online Bible study through the book of Romans. As you know, that we've missed a lot with our Sunday school class. Our Sunday school is going through Romans. I'm going to try to make up for that a little bit. So I'm going to be... Um, I'm going to be uh, pub posting a study every Sunday night at 6, uh, going through Romans, uh, doing studies that way. So I want to encourage you to, to do that. If you have any questions, you can ask me about that. That will be each Sunday night at 6 p.m. I'll be publishing that on, on the Internet. Also, uh, I plan on putting together a Good Friday service to post uh, on online on Friday night. I'll be publishing that Friday night at 7 o'clock so that we can be, uh, be mindful of what Jesus went through as he went on the cross. Okay? All right, so those are, those are some of the things we have uh, coming up uh, in the way of announcements. I uh, want to encourage you to keep each other in prayer. Um, keep our, um, our service, people who are serving in prayer that are in harm's way, that are risking, uh, risking their safety and health. Uh, we want to pray for them. Pray for our schools right now as they're trying to do uh, their, their studies online and working out the bugs and trying to get things going on that. Uh, also, want to just pray for our churches as we, as we gather, and we, as we try to worship um, on Sundays, try to keep everybody on the same page. Pray for... Uh, Pray for those who are without work right now. Pray for those who are uh, unemployed and, and really need the income coming in. So be mindful of these prayer requests. But one thing I was reminded today, I was, I was talking to somebody on the phone. Uh, it wouldn't be bad to just pray that this, uh, that this coronavirus fizzles out. Uh, just pray for that. Pray. That's the big reason why we're social, doing this social distancing is that it might fizzle out. Uh, because it won't have any any hosts to live in, so pray pray that it will either fizzle out or we have a cure. We come up there comes up with a cure for this coronavirus, okay? And then after it's over, then we can talk about what we learn and all those kinds of things. But for now, uh, just make that a matter of prayer. All right, those are the announcements and prayer requests. We're going to continue on with our our, our singing time.
21, verses 1 through 22, verses 1 through 22. The triumphal entry of Jesus into Jerusalem was a pivotal moment in time in both Israel and human history. It is the moment where Jesus is presented as the king of Israel and also to the rest of the world. And uh, the story of the triumphal entry has six parts, and we're going to look at those six different parts. And before we do so, let, let's begin with prayer. Let's have prayer. Father, we thank you for your blessings, and we thank you uh, for so many years ago that, that you did arrive and you did enter into Jerusalem triumphantly. And uh, we praise, praise you for that. And we do look forward to the day when you're going to enter into Jerusalem again uh, triumphantly and victoriously. And um, we just pray, Father, that we will receive you as our king before the second coming because lord this is the day of our salvation this is the time when we must decide to receive you into our lives to receive your your leadership to receive your your reign over us as our king so i pray lord you would use this message and use this word to speak to people for it's in christ's name we pray Amen. Okay, so the, six, the story has six different parts. The first part of the story we begin with is there was preparation. As Jesus was leaving Bethany, he stayed, he stayed at Bethany for about seven days before he started to come into Jerusalem for this triumphal entry. And so there was a preparation. Verse, chapter 21, verses 1 through 3. Look at the preparation. It says, now, when they drew near to Jerusalem and came to Bethphage, to the Mount of Olives, then Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village in front of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, you shall say, The Lord needs them, and he will send them at once. This took place to fulfill a spoken by the prophets. Okay, let's mention that. The preparation, what Jesus does, he sends two of his disciples into the, a village against them, and they are to go and get the donkey to get his ride into Jerusalem. So they went in there, and the specific instruction Jesus gives is kind of strange. He says, as soon as you walk in, go into that city, you're going to see them tied. In fact, other Gospels tell us that it was the that there was a donkey no one has ever ridden on it. So it was a donkey that was spe specially uh, set for this occasion. So they were also, when they got the donkey, they brought him back and they put, they put cloaks on them and then they put Jesus on the donkey. What this does, uh, it reminds us of how God provides in the moment. If you remember, God provided for Abraham in the moment. Uh, for many of us, when we're going to prepare for something this momentous, we would probably prepare for it months or maybe even weeks in advance, such as a wedding or such as a parade or, or something like this. But Jesus actually has us prepared the day of. And with God, often, often God provides not a week in advance, and God doesn't provide a year in advance. Oftentimes, God provides in the moment. I said with Abraham... He provided the sacrifice in place of his son Isaac. Okay? In fact, that, that term, Jehovah Jireh, means in the mount of the Lord it shall be seen, or the Lord shall see to it. The Lord will take care of it in the moment. Remember Moses. What was Moses' plan of providing for the children of Israel as they left Egypt and went into the promised land? Well, Moses didn't have a plan. His plan was, well, God will take care of this in the moment. In fact, you had the, the manna each day they had. Daily bread, the daily moment that they had. We gotta remind, we gotta be reminded that God provides in the moment. The second thing we're reminded of is that Jesus is Lord and He has ownership rights to everything. And Jesus says, when they come in to get you come go in there to get the donkey, if anybody asks you, tell them the Lord has need of it. 
Well, this is what they did. They went in there. Someone evidently asked them, the donkey and the colt, to say, hey, hey, where are you going with that? The Lord has need of it. And so for some reason, that, that was enough. <laughs> that was sufficient. And there are times when God raises up people to provide in moments where he is meet, moving. Such as uh, the tabernacle. When God built the, had the tabernacle built in the wilderness, uh, God put on people's heart to provide the furnishings for that tabernacle. Or just a few days before this moment, uh, God placed it upon Mary's heart to break this expensive perfume and to put it on Jesus' feet and anoint his feet. And Jesus said she was providing for his burial. But her worship was to God. She was giving it to God and it was providing worship, providing for something that God was doing. And I think it was probably the same thing here. This person was allowing the use of his donkey, was raising up this donkey for this very purpose. And also you have another thing where, another issue where there was a boy hit in his lunch. She had lunch and, and they had the multitudes and he gave it to Jesus and Jesus was able to feed the multitudes. So God, there's a lot of times when God will raise up people to provide in moments where he is moving. And all is required, all is required to say, well, the Lord needs it. Okay? Now here's the thing about the preparation I want you to get. Everything that we do in the Lord's service has the potential of having a testimony to a supernatural power. Something as mundane as going and getting Jesus his ride has a supernatural element to it. Has a has an adventure, has has that that touch of of God working in it. And that's one of the exciting things of being a follower of Christ. Because everything you do, even in the mundane things, you can begin to see God putting things together. As they went in there, it says, it really says, as the, the disciples went and as Jesus directed them, and it says that they saw it just as he said it was. You know, it, it was it's kind of interesting how you begin to see these little what would be accidents or coincidences happen as you begin to follow him and obey him. So that's one of the excitements. So even in the preparation, a mundane thing, the disciples see the supernatural touch of God in Jesus and what he's working through him. The second part of the story, so the first part is preparation. The second part is the prophecy. Is the prophecy. It says, This took place to fulfill what was spoken by the prop, saying, Say to the daughter of Zion, Behold, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, on the foal of a beast of burden. This points out to the, the significance of this event. Okay? It says, your king, Isaiah was pointing out, or not Isaiah, Zechariah was pointing out, your king is going to come to you humbly on a donkey. Now, how many people in human history do you think fits this description? Before Jesus comes, and even since Jesus had come, how many human beings you see have, have actually went into Jerusalem riding on a donkey, heralded by everyone as the king? <laughs> Not very many. In fact, there's only one person that this fits the bill for. This prophecy is fulfilled that that day Jesus was fulfilling a specific prophecy. Now, what you notice, secondly, about this prophecy? The king comes in humility. The little children would come uh, to him. He was humble enough the little children to come, could come to him. The outcasts, lepers, prostitutes, tax collectors, even the outsiders could come to him. Jesus was approachable. And that's one of the things I like about Jesus the most. He was somebody who could be approached. He wasn't so high and mighty that people couldn't come to him. And if you feel like God wouldn't have anything to do with you, think again. Because he comes to you humbly on a donkey. In fact, the donkey, there's two ways people would enter, could enter into, the, uh, into a country. First way is on a white horse to conquer the country. And that second way was humility. But humility was not a virtue in that day to be desired. Um, it definitely wasn't among kings. Humility was usually looked down on as a sign of weakness. 
It was something you would not want to display if you wanted to be a leader. Can you imagine in this presidential election, you have all these people debating and talking. Uh, humility. Humility. How much humility are they going to show in trying to win the presidential debate? We don't want to look too humble. We don't want to look too vulnerable. But we see Jesus coming to Jerusalem in a vulnerable stature. In a vulnerable stature. So the humble king, king comes humbly to Israel. Then you have the the uh, the prophecy being fulfilled, and then you have the parade. There's this procession. They put these cloaks. Let me read that verse seven. This, verse six. The disciples went and did as Jesus directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt, put on put on them their cloaks, and he sat on them. Most of the crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. And the crowds that went before him and that followed him were shouting, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when the entire, and when he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred up, saying, Who is this? And the crowd said, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth of Galilee. The, there was this parade. It says there were crowds. This was no small thing. When it talks about the town being stirred up, a strong language in the Greek, that this was a big thing. This was a big thing that was happening. All the people were stirred up and riled up. It was an excited crowd. Many in, in, in the Gospel of John, it tells us that many that were in that crowd were those who were new or knew of the miracle that Jesus performed with Lazarus, raising Lazarus from the dead. And they were all excited about that. So the whole city was stirred up, asking the question, Who is this? Who is this person? And of course, they answer, He's just a prophet. So you have the parade, this great parade that comes in. They're celebrating. And we know that, that they told him, they said, Well, you need to shut them down. You need to shut them up. And Jesus said, If I shut them up, even the rocks would cry out. Uh, this was something that was so great in human history that even all of creation would shout if we were to keep our keep our keep our peace about it. And then you have the, you have the parade, and then you have the proclamation. The proclamation. There are two things. The first phrase is Hosanna. The crowd is screaming out, Hosanna, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Do you know what Hosanna means? Well, let me read that out of Psalm 118. Psalm 118. This was a psalm. This was a prayer that Israel would pray at times during the Feast of Tabernacles. They would have one of these prayers. And out of Psalm 118, they would read this portion. I'm going to read verse, verse 19 through 27. Psalm 118, it's, it's right before the longest chapter in the Bible, Psalm 119. Psalm 118, verse, verse 19 through 27. Look at what it says. Open to me the gates of righteousness, that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord, the righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Save us, we pray, O Lord. O Lord, we pray, give us success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God. And he has made his light to shine on us. Bind the festal sacrifice with cords up to the horns of the altar. Save us. That's what Hosanna means. When the people are crying out, they're crying out, please save us. Save us, O Lord. And this is a proper saying to the one who's going to come. This is a, this is a prayer to the messianic king. And this is the right thing to say to the right person. 
at the right time. They're calling upon Jesus to save them. Who is this? And they, even though they did not recognize him yet fully as the Son of God, they fully recognized him, though, as coming from God, as the one who is the prophet from God. So they recognized that the works they saw through him were legitimate works, and so they would trust him. After Jesus gets into the town, into Jerusalem, they were shouting Hosanna and, and all of those things. The first in all of the Gospels, they, this is the thing he does on the day, on Palm Sunday. This is the thing he does. He does the purge. <laughs> he purges the temple. Verse 12, And Jesus entered the temple and drove out all who sold and bought in the temple. And he overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who sold pigeons. He said to them, it is written, My house shall be called a house of prayer, but you make it a den of robbers. I call this either the purge or he sets the priority. Because he drives out the money, the people who are making money. Now, it was not against the law. It was not against the Mosaic law to sell sacrifices in the temple. They would often do that. And in fact, it was provided for in the law because the people traveling from long distances to come in for the Passover. But it was wrong for them to mark up the price of a sacrifice. They would take advantage of the people. And they would mark up these prices so they were making money, a large amount of money on on the sacrifices in the temple. And just this made this made God livid, made him mad. And so the first thing Jesus does is he cleanses the temple of all the greed and he re restates the temple's purpose. Remember, he says, My house shall be called a house of prayer, but you made it a den of thieves. So you see Jesus' attitude as he purges the temple and he resets the priority of the temple on God's purposes. That this is a place where people can come and seek God. This is a place where people can come and pray and hear from God. This isn't a place for you to make money. This isn't a place for you to profiteer off of. And so Jesus, that's why he drove them out. As soon as Jesus drove them out, now the temple is now proper for the uses of what it's supposed to be for. And then we have the, the last part of the story. Perfect praise. Verse 14 through 16. After he purges the temple, then in the temple you begin to hear perfect praise. 14 through 16. And the blind and the lame came to him in the temple, and he healed them. But when the chief priests and the scribes saw the wonderful things that he did, let me, see, let me read that again. When the chief priests and the scribes saw the wonderful things that he did, and the children crying out in the temple, Hosanna to the son of David. They were indignant. And they said to him, Do you hear what these are saying? And Jesus said to them, Yes. Have you never read? Out of the mouth of babes, infants and nursing babes, you have perfected praise. And leaving them, he went out of the city to Bethany and lodged there. Perfect praise. Because Jesus cleansed the temple, chased them all out, all of a sudden what was, got, what was replaced in the temple were these works. These works that was done by the supernatural power of God. Things that money cannot buy. You cannot sell. You cannot sell to the lame person new legs. You cannot sell to the blind person new eyes. They can only get it through the supernatural power of God. And when the impurities of our life are cast out, when we're able to take them out, then God can move in and do a work that we cannot do. You cannot purchase what God can do. You cannot do that. And a lot of times people will substitute God's power. They will substitute what God can do, what they depend on God to do. They just begin to depend on money to do it. So things that money cannot buy. Wonderful things. It was interesting that they were seeing the wonderful things that were being done in the temple. 
these wonderful healings. And the children were given the right response. Children don't know any better. <laughs> but they were even crying out in the temple when they saw it. Hosanna! Hosanna to the, to the Son of David. Hosanna! Isn't that a wonderful thing? A wonderful prayer for the next generation to pray? Lord, save us. Wouldn't it be a wonderful prayer for our next generation to pray, Lord, save us? But to, be, to be desiring a visitation of God into their temple, be it desiring a visitation of God upon the next generation, instead of, instead of chasing God away, inviting Him to come back, instead of, instead of having these other things in their temple, they, they, they cleanse their own temple and take it out so they make room for the King of Glory to come in. Lord, save us. Isn't that a wonderful prayer for us? Hosanna. Lord, save us. Are we making room for Him? But you know what? There are people in, in the temple. There were people who took over the system. Evidently, they didn't think they needed saving. Or they didn't think that Jesus fit the bill of the Messiah. Even though He raised Lazarus from the dead, and even though He caused the lame to walk and the blind to see, would this not be the credentials you would look for in Messiah? In the coming kingdom? Where He would be repairing the things that the curse of sin would be destroying? So they did not think they needed saving. And you know there are people today that don't think they need saving. Did you know the Eastern Gate in Jerusalem? There's a gate that goes all, there's a wall that goes all around Jerusalem. And there's an Eastern Gate. And it is prophesied that Jesus, when he returns, that he will return through, well, many Jewish believe, Jewish rabbis believe he will go through that Eastern Gate. And uh, the Eastern Gate, if you were to look at it, you can get on the internet and look at that. The Eastern Gate is actually blocked off. One of the uh, one of the Mahabad, one of the Islam people in the early history, uh, he actually blocked it off in defiance of that prophecy. He says, we will not have Messiah returning to Jerusalem. We will block off this gate. And you know, that's the attitude of many people. We will not have Jesus entering into our lives. We will not have Jesus coming in and ruling over us. We will block off the entrance to our lives to keep them out. Well, Jesus, in this day, He doesn't come in as a warring tribal chief. He comes in humbly on a donkey. He offers Himself freely. He offers Himself simply to whoever would receive Him. We either choose today whether we receive Him as our King or we reject Him. And we know that Later throughout the week, in this pivotal time in history, in world history, in the history of the universe, in this pivotal time, while they received him on Palm Sunday, they reject him throughout the week, and they put him on a cross. The whole world does. The Romans and the Jews, the entire world reject Christ and said, we will not have him as our king. We will not have him rule over us. But the choice is yours. You will close off your gate to Him, or you will open your gate to Him. And you will welcome Him into your life. Allow Him to have reign. He comes to you humbly, as a lowly, as a lowly servant. Will you not have Him today? Let's pray. Father, we pray that Lord would help us to receive You into our lives. And Lord, not to change our heart and change our mind when we hear all the, the details of what you call us to be and do. I pray, Lord, that you will help us to repent of our sin and come to faith to you while it is the acceptable time. Lord, while now is the day of salvation, because, Lord, when you return, you will go through that gate. Whether we like it or not, every knee shall bow, every tongue will confess that you are Lord to the glory of, Father, of the Father. So I pray, Lord, you help us to call upon you while there is grace, while it's acceptable time. For it is in Christ's name we pray.
Well, thank you for listening, and uh, we hope, uh, remember, just check our website out, www.tvccanton.com, for the online prayer and for the uh, weekly Bible study. Okay? Thank you, and God bless. Bye-bye.